My name's Elise Freshwater Blizzard, and I love nature. I live on the doorstep of one of the most beautiful lands in the UK, the Peak District. With some of the most famous caves in the country, let me show you a piece of my life as we travel together deep, down, under. Welcome back to Deep Down Under and welcome to one of the most popular caves in the UK. This is Giant's Hole and it looks beautiful, doesn't it? My gosh. So if you're a first time caver or if you're thinking about caving, you'll probably come here with a guided instructor on a tour around the cave, which is what we're going to be doing today. A little bit of a tour around the cave. Now, this is a great cave to show how safe caves are and that's what we're going to be focusing on today because the public has a perception that caves are very dangerous places when in fact caves can be safer than being outside sometimes so we're going to go through that today so if you'd like to come on in and let's take this journey together before we even enter the cave we must call a caving friend to tell them where we are going and when we're expected to be out if we're not out by that time, cave rescue will be called and then they will address any problems that we have underground. Caves are a lot safer than one might expect, which is why we don't have to worry about the cave caving in because this doesn't really happen. However, things aren't safe if you don't follow proper precaution. And that's why today I've taken a visit to cave rescue to find out more about how to keep safe underground. So hats on, lights on, and let's go. So what do Cave Rescue do exactly? Um, well, as the name suggests, we rescue people from caves and mines all over, mainly the Peak District. Our area is actually a bit bigger than the Peak District, mm -hmm. but it mainly tends to be in the, uh, in the Peak District region. Garland's Pot is a what we call a pitch, which is a drop in a cave uh, where you need ropes or, or ladders to, to access it. Um, we, we normally use ropes and, and a technique called single rope technique where we'd abseil down into the cave. Um, obviously these are areas of particular danger because people can fall down them or maybe not get up uh, a pitch. Uh, we get quite a few people who go down and then maybe don't have the strength uh, or the energy left after a long caving trip to get back up. So we as Cave Rescue go to Garland's Pot a lot. Um, because it tends to be a favourite among uh, groups. Um, so I'm talking groups of novice cavers, um, outdoor bound groups, um, those kind of people. So it tends to get a lot of, a lot of footfall, a lot of traffic. Um, so yeah, the most frequent um, reason for us to, to go to Garlands on a rescue um, does vary quite a lot. Um, one of the main reasons is exhaustion. So people go down there, get very tired, um, maybe don't have the, the energy that they thought to get all the way back out. Um, there's sometimes injuries, probably a bit less common, but people fall in and injuring themselves is a little bit less common. Um, but yeah, I think, I think mainly just exhaustion and lack of, um, lack of skills um, and training to get themselves out. So this is Garland's Pot. As you can notice, I've had sailed here and not there where the water is. Because staying in water for too long can just invite hypothermia along and that's something we don't want to do. So we're going to leave this area now as quickly as possible to continue our journey. So what we're going through now is called the Vados Trench. Vado's trenches are like small corridors carved over the years by water, running through them, chipping away at the water to create this really awkward corridor that we have to go through. And this one is called the crab walk because we're going to be walking a bit like crabs through this long, long walk. And when I say long, I mean long. It's half an hour worth of walking. So by the end of it, we're both a bit sweaty from this journey. But that's a good thing because 
it's good to stay warm underground. And a good practice cavers have is that if we find ourselves getting cold, we do, I don't know, 30 squats or we do some press ups or we just do some rapid movement to help us get warm again because it's all about raising that body core temperature. Otherwise, we might get hypothermia and we don't want that happening. What are your expert tips for cavers to keep safe underground at all times? So the biggest thing is to be prepared and be sensible about the weather, about the cave and about your party. A lot of the things where people get into predictable problems are because they've either overestimated what they're able to do, they've not worked out what will happen in certain weather conditions, or they've not given themselves enough time to do the trip that they want to do. And a lot of that would cover many of the predictable things. So most people would wear some kind of quick drying fleece undersuit. Um, so if it gets wet, it stays relatively warm, and when you're out of the water, then it dries up relatively quickly. And then a kind of tough overlayer. Depending on how wet things are and what kind of conditions, it might be something which is completely waterproof, so the water will run off it. If you're in a very um, wet cave with a lot of spray, then that's quite good. If you're in some of the Derbyshire caves, then you would tend to wear something which is more resistant because you're going to be rubbing against the rocks, or something which is water resistant, but is more wear resistant because you don't want to tear it, you don't want to rip things. Generally wear wellies on your feet. Some people wear caving boots, kind of rubber, uh, thick leather boots, which again quite resistant, give you a lot of wear and the grip is fairly solid. And then a helmet is essential for anyone who's going caving. Of all the caves in the country, this cave is known to have the most radon. Well, what does that mean? Well, radon is is known to give you cancer, but the thing is, is that this isn't really important for us cavers. And the reason is, is that you have to be in this cave every single day of the year for it to have any effect on you. Oh. The thing is, it's just not something to worry about when you come down here to have fun. It's not going to affect our health at all. We'll be absolutely fine. One of the gases which is found in a number of caves is radon, which is radioactive. Um, most people know that down in Cornwall and Devon, where there's a lot of granite, you can end up with radon, um, but you can get it in limestone areas as well. Some of the caves in the Peak District are known to have relatively high concentrations of radon. Um, however, there's been a lot more work done in the, Peak, in the Peak District than in a lot of other places. So whether it's unique to the Peak District or whether it's just that it's been looked for here, um, mm -hmm. It is unclear. Personally, radon is not something which overly concerns me. I'm more worried about the kind of air problems that can cause you immediate problems, so things like carbon dioxide, low oxygen levels, rather than radon. There are risks with anything in life. Um, there is a small risk that exposure to radon could lead to long-term problems, with lung cancer and so on, but equally there are many other things that could do that as well. And while that there may be a risk there, it's a risk that I think you need to balance and there are other ones which I'm much more concerned about while caving and I think, I think that's probably generally the attitude of most of the cavers. So we've come to a bit of the cave called the Windpipe, which is just down there behind me. And you can see it's just a black hole descended into darkness and we're going to go right in it. Now why is it called the Windpipe? Well, it's in an oval shape and it's got a lot of water in it. So again, it's going to be quite uncomfortable to go through. It's going to be cold as well. So I'm not looking forward to that at all. But with these things, you've just got to go through them and you've just got to do it as quickly as possible and then it's over. It's a long wet crawl, but we'll do it. Oh, 
So the last two call outs Cave Rescue, Darvish Cave Rescue have had to Giant's Hole have been caused by people with the incorrect skills and equipment going down Garland's pot. Um, when we as cavers or as Cave Rescue uh, go down Garland's, we use a system of equipment to safely descend ropes and then safely ascend the ropes again afterwards, which ensure we are at all times connected to the rope and it is impossible to fall. Um, the most recent call out, the last two, to Garland's have involved groups of people who, are, who, who aren't what we'd necessarily term cavers, who are, who are groups of people who are out for an outdoor adventure and have heard about this place and often, you know, using very new, shiny um, kit that they've not used before, so they don't really know how it works. They might normally make, manage, but not always, to make it safely down garlands, but then they struggle on the way back up because they haven't got the correct equipment to safely ascend the ropes or the correct skills to use that equipment properly. Uh, the last rescue I was on at Garland's Pot, the cavers at the bottom were not cold, they were not tired, they were quite happy, they just didn't know how to get back up a rope they descended. You can get past if you want. As we call our caver friend to tell them that we're safe and we wash our kit up, I reflect. Giants has been a wonderful adventure and Cave Rescue have shown me that you can't just walk into any cave without the experience, the training and the proper equipment. I found out that caves are much safer than most people think but are deadly without the right preparation. Until next time on Deep Down Under.